Ask, and it shall be given us. Oh God, we want to thank you right now for aiding us to be in the house of God one more time. Oh, yeah. oh God, we want to thank you for everything you've done and everything that you're going to do. Yes. Oh God, thank you to bless our leader today, Lord. As he speaks the word, Lord. Oh God, help him, oh God, to explain the word of God. For the word will be allotted to our feet yes. and allotted to our path. Oh, oh God, we have access and praise you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for everything you've done, everything that you're going to do, Lord. Thank you to one that's here today, Lord. Oh, God, bless them right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, let them open their heart. But you said, make a joyful noise to the Lord. Oh, you man. Oh, yeah. Serve the Lord with blackness. Come before his cousin with singing. Know that he is God. He is God. And he's the one that saved us. Oh, God, I want to thank you right now, Lord. As you look on the honor of family today, Lord. Oh, God, in the eye we bereave. Oh, God, make you to touch their heart. Let them know about the earth have no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. Oh, God, I bless you bless them right now in the name of Jesus. Those that are sick today, Lord, touch your body, Lord. When I love that you heal them, Lord. Your heart sinks in your body, and your head. Oh, God, I bless you bless them right now in the name of Jesus, oh God. Oh, yeah. Right now, Lord, come on in the house, Lord. Let your presence be kept, Lord, yeah. in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, let me give you the praise. I'm glad to see you, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, let me give you the praise. I'm glad to see you, oh God, in the name of Oh God, if they come to and fro, Lord, keep your loving arm and take them around, Lord. Let us know, Lord, that you are leading them. Oh God, the high, high, and deep, and down. In Christ Jesus. Oh God, we want to thank you right now. Each and every blessing we ask for, Lord. In your name, Lord, not man, but you, oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, somebody praise Christ today. Happy Father's Day. Hallelujah. I know we pray, we say, Our Father. How many can tell Christ Happy Father's Day? Hallelujah. Because you are our Father. You deserve our praise. How many can tell Christ Happy Father's Day? Hallelujah. Because you are our Father. You deserve our praise. Hallelujah. Yeah.
How many know how much they need Jesus today?
if you're gonna say it with me. Just to see you. To be hold you as my king.
they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Isn't it true that he's a good God? Isn't it true that he saved us? Isn't it true that he delivered us? Then let us worship him. Hallelujah. In spirit and in truth. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We honor the Lord in his presence here at Refuge Temple. Hallelujah. We honor the Lord for our senior leaders, Bishop Dr. Elijah Solomon, Lady Christine Solomon. Can we give God a, a good thank you for them? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, to all of uh, all of the members of this church. Hallelujah to all of our elders, uh, Elder Parker. Hallelujah to the deacons. Hallelujah. All of the deacons, Deacon Grant Dunn, uh, Deacon Anthony Booker, uh, Deacon Willie Simmons, uh, uh, Deacon Ed Eddie Simmons, uh, Deacon Jimmy Hammond, hallelujah, Deacon Ham, uh, all of the, did I miss anybody? Dumas, Deacon Dumas, Deacon Spence, hallelujah. We honor the Lord for all of them. Can we just love on all of the men and say happy Father's Day? Come on, look at our Father and say happy Father's Day. Come on, look at him and say happy Father's Day. Hallelujah. This, today is Father's Day. Uh, and a lot of things are going on all over the world. A lot of things are going on to where men are not valued as men. A lot of things have replaced the man in the house. But we're thanking God for godly men and for a godly position that God has ordained the man to be a part of the family. So can we thank Jesus for a man today? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, we're we're, we're going to go ahead, hallelujah, and dive into the word today. I know some people got it plans to get, do this and do that, and I just thank God for what he's doing. Can we thank God for our musicians uh, for coming in and blessing us. Both of these uh, guys are ministers of the gospel, so we just thank them, hallelujah, for fellowshipping with us, for well, this is a fellowship of what? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Can, if you have your Bibles, Thank you, Jesus. We're going to go through to Matthew, the first chapter, uh, and we're going to start at verse number 18. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. How y'all feel today? Y'all feel all right? Yeah. Hallelujah. The air is flowing a little better today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to try to have y'all out of here before it get too hot. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Uh, 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 last Sunday, I started a message uh, that's uh, three parts, and uh, we talked about back to the basics. Everybody say back to the basics. Back to the basics. God is trying to get his church back into the posture and where we can be used by him. Not only can we be used by him, but we can reap the benefits of being blessed. God has not intended for you to grow old and be broken poor. Amen. Amen, somebody. God did not want you to go through your years of being a child, a teenager, to being 20 and 30 and 40 and 50, 60, some of you 70, 80 years old and be broke. Amen. His gospel does something unique for us that we as Christians need to learn to understand that God has given us one. Everybody say wisdom. wisdom. Two, say favor. favor. Three, say authority. authority. Say authority. authority. That's right, I'm going to teach a little bit today. God has given us wisdom to strategize through what we need to get done. It's a man's job to think before he responds. As a child, we learn to think before you speak. Don't let everything that come up, come out. But down through the years, we forgot it. We forgot because we say anything to anybody. We're not thinking about what we're going to say before it comes out. 
What comes up comes out, and sometimes it's curse words, sometimes it's an attitude, sometimes it's disobedience, sometimes it's friction. But God has not just given us, hallelujah, wisdom to think about it, but he's also given us authority. The Bible teaches us that the power of life and death is in our tongue. And so we have to be careful what we say to one another. Look at somebody and say, be careful what you say. Look at somebody else and say, be careful what you say. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on the rise and uh, the mother uh, Mary uh, was not with Joseph. Before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Somebody say Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, verse 19, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was mindful to put her away. Verse 20, but while he thought of these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, Fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for this is which is conceived is her of the Holy Ghost. I'm going to go back. Uh, Matthew, first chapter, verse number 20. It says, But he thought of these things, and behold, an angel of the Lord appeared unto him, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not. Today I want to talk about the fear factor. Look at somebody and say the fear factor. The fear factor. Fear, the fear factor. What is fear? Fear. What is this thing that, that, that takes control of us? This, this thing that we allow to put us in a box. Uh, the dictionary defines fear. Anybody, everybody knows what fear is, right? It's an unpleasant emotion that calls that causes uh, the belief of somebody uh, to be in jeopardy. Thank you, Jesus. Matthew, the first chapter, verse number 18. All right, write it down. We're going to get these screens back up here soon. So just be patient with us. <laughs> the fear factor. Fear is something, uh, 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 it feels like pain. It's something that isolates you from moving forward. If you ever saw a car flying down the street and you're at a stop sign, you're not just going to go out there and, and get hit by the car, right? Something causes you, something makes you to hold, something uh, uh, speaks to your spirit, something grabs the hold of your body that calls you to stop. Everybody say stop. stop. Fear is something that calls us to stop moving forward. Now, a lot of us, we have dreams and visions. We got everything. Y'all not praying with me today. I'm up here burning up. We got things that we need to be doing. Uh, God has given us a vision to do things, but it's just hard for us to get it off the ground. It's hard for us to get this idea off the ground because sometimes our mindsets, uh, hallelujah, places us into a prison that we can't move forward. But I come to speak against that mindset that said that you cannot do it and tell you that you can't do it. Look at somebody and say, I can do it. Look at somebody else and say, I can do it. We as saints have to get our minds back. We have to get our minds back so that God can be God. We have to get our minds back because God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. God does not want you to be stuck. Oh, stupid. God does not want you to be confused about what he's calling you to do. He's calling you to do something that's never been done before. He's calling you to be the first and not the last. Sometimes we go places when we don't get there on time. Guess what? We're in the back of the line. And we got to wait. We get to that process of trying to get to point A and figure out that now it's a part of this process that now we have to wait. Look at somebody and say, are you waiting? Are you waiting? What are you waiting for? Are you waiting? What's keeping you from moving forward? Is it fear? Is it fear? Have you learned to use the tools that 
God has given you, and I'm talking to y'all, I'm, I'm, I'm trying not to hoop, I'm trying not to preach, because it's, it's very important that you get this so you can use this from day to day. What is keeping you from moving forward? What is keeping you? Is it your past sins? Is it things that, that you committed to yourself that you don't want to talk to nobody about? Is it, is it some type of dysfunction? But I've come to tell you God has given us something to get over all of this. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. It's something that we have to get back to doing. It's something that is very important. Like last week we talked about prayer. By a show of hands, how many people go into prayer good this week? Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Give yourselves a hand. Now we have to get back to prayer, but not only do we have to get back to prayer, we must get back to receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost. Everybody say Holy Ghost. In this scripture, you will see what the angel of the Lord tells Joseph, that she is with something that we call the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is not a, 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 a hot topic. You don't see them creating reality shows centered around the Holy Ghost. You don't see them uh, branding the Holy Ghost. You don't see them using the Holy Ghost because the Holy Ghost is nothing to play with. Amen. Amen. When you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, God gives you power. Not only do he give you power, he gives you wisdom. Not only do he give you wisdom, he gives you favor. Not only do he give you favor, he gives you something that we need today and everybody say faith. Faith is a key that unlocks your success. Say it again. Faith is the key that unlocks your success. You might be saying success for what? Success to be a better person. Success to love. How many of you got people right now that you can't stand to be around? Stand to sit in the same room, stand and say something to? It's, it, it's something that's, that's there. Alright? It's something that Something that we don't like about this person that keep us from moving forward in a good, healthy relationship. Yeah. So some of you, you know, we just don't honor God in what he's established us to be, and that's brothers and sisters. I ain't going to touch on that right now. But let me get back to this faith. Faith is the tool that we need to get through things. Yeah. And what I mean by get through things, uh, there is a part of you that unlocks the mysteries of God, there's a part of you that unlocks, hallelujah, the unchanging love of God for your life, and that is through faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. It's impossible to please God. I don't care what, how much money you got. I don't care if it's good, bad, and ugly. It's impossible to please God. We worship a God, hallelujah, that he gives us access to him. Uh, uh, and when we believe this thing, he will establish it. And so we have to do that according to our level of faith. Yeah. Faith is something that can give you access to God's healing power. Yeah. How many of you have ever been sick yeah. and needed God to heal you? Not only did you ask God, but you had faith to believe that you were going to get healed. We need to reactivate our faith in God. God did not bring us through all of these trials and tribulations. He didn't bring us through COVID. So many people die because of COVID. Then they created this monkeypox. Then they created all this other stuff. But yet, here we are still alive. Here we are, still alive. You've got to be alive for a reason. You've got to be here for a reason. Like Joseph, Joseph was wondering, what is the reason that I got to do this? What is the reason? He had already made up in his mind, listen, I ain't married this girl, I ain't had sex with this girl, this baby cannot be mine. This baby cannot be mine. There's a part of what we say adoption is that we must take on in the church. We all have been adopted into a royal priesthood. And so there's a certain responsibility that comes with adoption. If you ever known somebody to adopt people and adopt children, 
I remember being young and seeing uh, where adoption was the thing to do because you had a caring heart. Yeah. We've seen so many families say right here in this church because of adoption. Yeah. It's a part of God's process of love. Yeah. If we can claim something that is not ours, but is God, then we have favor with the Lord. Yeah. We have favor with the Lord because we're coming out of ourselves and saying, God, I did not birth this child. I did not birth this thing, but I'm going to adopt this responsibility. I'm going to partner with you and the Holy Ghost to make sure this son, this, this daughter, this, this boy, this girl get a chance at life a better way than putting them in a system. We must take on the mindset of God. To be in God is to be a lover of God. Yeah. And to be a lover of God is to endure all of his suffering. Yeah, right. you got to be a partaker of his, of his suffering. Yeah. Yeah. It's when we come to this table and have bread with communion, we are partakers of his suffering. You cannot be a Christian and work in the kingdom if you don't know how to endure suffering. Suffering is a part of the process. You are not going to escape suffering. I don't care how old you get, you cannot run from suffering. But what you must do in the midst of suffering, what David did, he put on the garment of praise and take on the spirit of heaven. Suffering will cause you to go into a place to where you are challenging God. Joseph did not want this burden. He did not want this responsibility to say that this is his child. But the angel of the Lord had to appear to him and say, Sir, you're missing out on a good thing. You're missing out on a good thing. Now, where Joseph looked at it as it's going to be hard for him because in the public's eye, he didn't want to endure that. He didn't want to say everybody knew that he had been with him. Yeah. But yet, you're going to take on this responsibility? Jesus. As men, that's what we do. Yeah. We wrestle with God. There are plenty of stories in the Bible where men wrestle with God. Let's look at Jonah, for example. Jonah was given the word of the Lord to go and preach and tell them the truth. Amen. What did he do? He ran. He ran. He got on the ship. And when he got on the ship, the ship just got all tangled and twisted up. And the people on the ship were suffering because of his disobedience. How many people are around you are suffering because you won't obey God? You won't obey God because you can't feel it how you want to feel it. Because you can't see it how you want to see it. We become self-pleasing creatures when we don't rely on God. Jonah ran. He ran and messed up the ship. They threw him off the ship. Then he got in, 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 a, in a well. Big old fish. Okay. Yes, yeah, this fish is out there that's big enough to hold man. It was when he came to himself and said, God, now I'm paraphrasing this. You go back and you study your work. Now, God, I don't want to go to them people not going to receive me. That's what such da, 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 da. Really? You telling God this? Are you really telling God you don't want to do this? Jesus. You telling God you don't want to be the sacrifice? Jesus. Are you really Jesus. telling God Jesus. you can't do this? And he's telling you that I'm giving you the activities of your limbs. Yes. As long as you've got breath in your body, yes. you can do it. I don't care your educational level. I don't care how much money is in the bank. If I say you can do it, you can do it. And we still tell the God no. Jesus. We have to get back to the basics yes. of yes. seeking God. Hallelujah. We used to seek God for instructions. We used to seek God for a way out of nowhere. We done got so confused with this, what they call the popcorn generation of the uh -huh. to where we want to see stuff overnight. Uh -huh. We want to see it instantly. Yeah. The world has even set us up to get stuff uh, 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 delivered to our house the same day. Ain't it something? Mm -hmm. 
It used to be a time where you had to wait for a package to come. You used to have to wait. If you didn't want, if you was not going to wait, you had to literally go get it. So us as Christians, we forgot that there's a, a waiting is a part of the process. Yes. Waiting to see the victory is a part of the process. Yes. Now he does do miracle signs and wonders and he will change something overnight. Jesus. But if he do it for us that fast, you're going to think you're too good. You're going to get the smell of yourself. Yes. You mean to tell me you ain't going to endure nothing? You mean to tell me because it ain't going your way, you're going to give up? You mean to tell me just cause you mad cause she did this and he said that that you just gonna walk away? Jesus. It's time for us to get back to what God has originally to cause us to be. And that's his children. That's his servants. Yes. Yes. And so fear is a factor right now that a lot of us are struggling with. We won't come to reality but because it's gonna change some things around us. When we take on that stronghold of fear, then the spirit of the living God is going to do something that he's never done before. You have to overtake this mindset, allowing you to be fearful. You're so afraid you don't want to come out of the house, you don't want to talk to him, you don't want to talk to her. you got to let go of this fear. The Bible says, Son, I reckon for the suffering of the present time cannot be compared to the glory of God, which shall be revealed. Yeah. The suffering of the present time, what you are suffering, yeah. what your mind is suffering in, because it's all a trick of the mind. It's in the mind. Amen. That's why you got to get your mind back. You get your mind back, you get your faith back. You get your faith back, you get your power back. You get your power back, you get your authority back. Yeah. It's that simple. When you say it like that, Elder Oliver, but you don't know. Yes, I do know. I've learned to trust God no matter what. Yeah, that's right. No matter what, yeah. I'm trusting God. That's it. That's it. I mean, you can take it to the bank. Mm -hmm. You can take it to the bank. There's so many testimonies in here of people mysteriously getting money and don't know how they're doing it, won't happen. But your level of faith allowed you to believe oh, God. The angel of the Lord was trying to get Joseph to see that you got to trust the Holy Ghost. Yes. Joseph knew because the Old Testament had the prophecies that Jesus was coming. It, it, it tells us that there was going to be a one that was born of a virgin. There was going to be one to literally change the kingdom. There was going to be one. Joseph had to realize that from a friend. You may say, who is my friend today? I don't have no friends. I'm not able to trust anyone. But the spirit of the living God has literally placed you uniquely with people. There are people that are connected to you that can literally speak in your life if you just listen. Yeah. We have to learn to listen. We have to learn to listen to the community that God has placed us in. Yeah. There is no mountain too high, no valley too low, that we cannot learn to trust a king. We have to trust again. And there's been relationships in our lives that your friends didn't handle you the right way. They lied on you. They talked about you. They criticized you. They didn't understand who you was. But God is saying, I'm in this season of your life, I'm connecting you with the right people. You got to look around. I'm done, Joshua. Come on. You got to look around and see what I bless you to be with. To be with. Get your mind back, church. It's time for us to grow up in God. It's time for us to have no more fear and just faith to focus. Get your focus back. Time to get your focus back. Get some structure. I mean, this pandemic has just really just tripped us up. I found myself getting upset with myself because I can't get to church when, when I want to get to church. And I'm going, Lord, I just, it, 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 it ain't my wife's fault. 
uh -uh, it ain't my daughter's fault, it's my fault. So what can I do to help me be a better leader so that I can get where we need to get on time? You got to ask yourself that question. Do I need to prepare at night? Do I need to lay my clothes out at night? Now, I know I live 30, 45 minutes from the church, and sometimes you get on the highway, it's train. You got to factor this stuff in. You have to be strategic now, y'all. The devil is no fool. He know everything that will tick you off. He know that one person, that if they call you Elder Plum, you're going to go out. He, he know. You have, you cannot be ignorant to Satan's devices. You have to be smart because he's not smarter than you. You walk with God. You have the authority that God has given you. Not only, not only that, but he has angels encamped around you. And so what you give him access to, he gonna take access. Oh yeah, that's right. He'll take your mind, not only will he take your mind, he'll take your money, not only did he take your money, but he'll take your relationship. And next thing you know, you down, busted and disgusted. That's right. That's right. Mad at everybody else, but taking ownership for what you need to own. Right. Joseph knew that this ownership part, and I'm, I'm closing, this ownership part, that if he took ownership of this, this, this child, this, this baby, then he knows that it's going to come with a level of responsibility in which he did not want. He did not want the shame. He did not want the burden. How many of you know it costs money to raise a child? Yeah. Yeah. Woo. It costs money to raise a child. Amen. I didn't know it until I got my home. <laughs> I thought my mom just was, you know, telling me I ain't need that because they want me to get had it. But now that as I walk down the aisles of the store and my little girl grabbed everything, it's just like, you don't need that. <laughs> what you need this for? This cost a toy costs $34. <laughs> for a doll that don't talk, she can't write, she can't even do no homework. You mean to tell me I got to buy this and if I don't buy it, we're going to have a tantrum moment? Okay. And I can't whoop you because it, it's not fair. Children come with responsibility. Yeah. Joseph imagined all of these things. He knew the burden. He knew what he was going to have to do for something that wasn't even his. But Joseph, when the angel of the Lord spoke to him, and she told him that Mary is with child and was conceived through the Holy Ghost. This is one of the miracles in which Christians cannot be a part of the kingdom. Hear me closely. If you cannot receive that this was a miracle, then you'll have a hard time believing that God can do a miracle for you. You have to open up your mind. I don't know why we do this. We will watch Harry Potter and watch all this witchcraft, all of this witchery and sorcery, and believe that the cat don't come out the head. But we don't really believe the God of the Bible that says that the Holy Ghost impregnated Mary. Yes. When you can believe this one miracle, that will change your mindset to realize that God is able to do anything. He's able to do everything. He's able to change your mind. He's able to change your life. He's able to change your situation if you just believe. Just believe. Get back to believing what God said. We as the church need to go back to reading our word, studying it for ourselves. You got to study this word for yourself. You cannot depend on Nehemiah to come up here and set you on fire off of the word in his bed. That's for him in his work. You cannot expect Sister Bruce, Sister Bruce to come up here, 
Because she's a beautiful songbird. She Amen. just, can we give God a praise for our praise team? Sister Sherry, Sister Allison, they're doing such a wonderful job. But you can't expect them to get up in, in here and use the word that they use for them for you. They are leading you to a place. They're not performing the sacrifices oh, for right. you. That's right. It's that's your right. job to participate. Look at somebody and say participate. Now I know a lot of us we grow up in age and older and we can't run these eyes like we used to. <laughs> I know I can't. We can't do all of the things, but there's a certain responsibility in the spirit. Somebody say in the spirit. In the spirit. That we must commit to to change this atmosphere. Yeah. Literally, people will come into this place, and by the worship atmosphere that we create, chains will begin to fall. What? Our people, chains of bondage, yeah. will begin to fall when we get the house in order. Bishop Solomon has been telling this church to reimagine. Reimagine. Re yeah. And some of you, before you reimagine, you need to get your mind back so you can see it. Stop looking at everybody else. Stop looking, some of you at your bank account. Stop looking at the old church and reimagine what God can do. For us. I'm closing. Everybody on your feet. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I see four people going to sleep this time. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. When you go home, I want you to read Matthew, the first chapter. Read it. Because it's the beginning of change. It's the beginning of the life of Jesus Christ. Verse 21 says, And she shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Jesus. Everybody say Jesus. For he shall save the people from their sins. We were all born in sin, shaped into iniquity. We all have something that we're petitioning God to forgive us from. You may be saying, I'm not sinning. I'm too young and too old. I ain't doing nothing. No, you're exalting yourself before God. Pray. Pray for the church. Pray that this place will get back to the place where people can be delivered, where people can be saved. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hands lifted, eyes closed. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Spend a little moment right here, God. No moving, no talking.
our own altars right where we're standing right now. It's an altar right where you're standing. Spiritually, I want you to place on your altar what you want to give God. It may be your time. It may be your money. But God, I'm placing on this altar right before me. And I give it to you. Yeah. This burden, this thing is heavy. It's all It's so heavy that I can't sleep like I should be sleeping at night. This burden, this false burden that I'm dealing with, Father, I present it to you. I can't help with it. They say that you'll never put more in than I can bear, but this thing is starting to hurt. And so I'm giving it to you, Jesus. I don't have the money. I don't have the time. I don't even have the, the, the faculty to get to this. So God, I give it to you. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, don't give up. Don't keep worship. Lift your hands if you need to. If you need to walk, walk the aisle. If you need to kneel and pray, kneel and pray. Come out of shame. Come out of defeat. Come out of fear. Stop that in the coach. So, Father, we stand here now. We present our bodies as living sacrifice. As I pray, you pray also. We present our bodies as living sacrifice. And on this day, we do something that we've never done before. And we commit to you the totality of a commitment that keeps us in a covenant. The Bible tells us that you're coming back for a church without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. And Father, we want to go to heaven. We know people are not talking about heaven or hell no more, but Father, we know that you are in heaven. We want to dwell there. We want to be with you there. So Father, we pray thy kingdom come. Come now. Come to the earth and dwell here. Come to the earth and see about your son. Come to the earth and see about your God. Come on, pray right here. Come on, pray for somebody. Come on, pray for somebody. Come on, call their name out. Come on, call them out. Come on. We go into a place of intercession and we pray for our sons. We pray for our sons. We pray for our daughters. God, we ask that you save them. We ask that you redeem them. Pray them out of the place of shamefulness. Father, you created a family, and that's a family of love. This is a fellowship of love. So, Father, we pray together, and they that pray can expect a miracle. And you said in one can chase a thousand, two can chase ten thousand. So, Father, we stand in agreement together that they are worth it, that has been more than this, that it will not prosper. We are your children, and we are your sons. We are your daughters. We walk into a void that they will be saved. Thank you, Jesus. Save our son. Save our Lord. Save the Lord. Save him. Save him. Save him. Save him. Save him. Thank you, Jesus. Save him. Thank you, Jesus. Save him. Save him. Save him. Come on, save him. Save him. Just see their faces in your mind. Save him. 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 Come on. Come on, go down people in the lane. Some people you want God to save. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Go down people in the lane. Look at their faces. Save them, Lord. Save them, Lord. Deliver them, Lord. Hallelujah. Break them out. Break them out of the prison, God, that they have put themselves in, Father. Break them out of the prison today, God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, today is Father's Day. Thank you, Jesus. And I, I, I want every man to meet me at this altar. Stay right there, child. Thank you, Jesus. Every man, every man, if you can, come to this altar. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. These 
are husbands, these are fathers, these people are leaders. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. These are the priests. Thank you, Jesus. They are not perfect. All made. 